Allow me to introduce Janet, whose father developed Alzheimer's disease when she was in her teens. Janet feared that she would also develop the disease and sought out a genetic test for the type of Alzheimer's her father had, known as late onset. Alzheimer's attacks the brain. It affects memory, thinking, and behavior. While doctors don't know what causes the disease, they have identified a version of a gene named APOE4 that marks an increased risk for late onset Alzheimer's. It's possible to inherit a single copy of this altered gene from your mother or your father. You can also inherit two copies, one from each parent, which increases the risk even more. Now here's Janet's story. Is that you? That's me. How come you go so many places? Because my father we took us every single weekend, every single vacation we went somewhere, and he documented everything. My dad was great. He was a lot of fun. But How he was strict. Was and you followed the rules, you had a lot of fun. But if you didn't follow the rules, you got to sit in the car. How I spent my share of time in the car. How old was he when he got Alzheimer's? Well, he was uh, 58 when he first started, you know, showing signs that something was wrong. Okay. You think he could have had it earlier? It just wasn't, like, clear? Maybe. I think he was pretty sharp, though, until about 58. It was... It wasn't until he was 62 that we actually got the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. She told me everything about the test. She told me it's not that big of a deal. It's just something she wanted to take and help the research of Alzheimer's. I got the worst results. I am APOE 4-4. I have a 50 to 90 percent chance of getting Alzheimer's disease before age 85. Last night I said I, I was really mad at my mother because I didn't expect the gene to come down from her. I knew I had it from him. I knew my father was going to pass a gene. I knew that. I felt that. I, but I never expected it to come from both sides. No, I don't think she was afraid. I don't think she was surprised either. I think she knows that it's going to happen and that she's going to look it right in the eye. I can honestly say that I selfishly never looked down. I only looked up the uh, family tree. My kids just never came into the picture for me. And it wasn't until yesterday when Dr. Relkin gave me the results of the genetic testing and also explained to me that because I was 4'4", I definitely passed a four to each of my children. That was probably the most heartbreaking of all the news. Good game. Good game. You know, for me, the most frustrating thing is the level of uncertainty. We came walking out of there. Yeah, nothing's changed. You're the same person today as you were yesterday. And if you were going to get it, you were going to get it whether or not you had this test. And you were going to get it whenever you were going to get it. Life was going to take its natural course. But after the results of the test and after listening to the explanations, um, you, you have a different feeling of a finality here almost. What I'm going to say now to people is that uh, I've only begun to fight. I've got a lot of background. I know a lot. Uh, I've learned a lot more. And I think that um, in my now state of pre-Alzheimer's disease, I will be uh, as much of an advocate as I can to make sure that everyone's eyes are opened. No one knows for sure if Janet will develop Alzheimer's. In Janet's case, the genetic test only indicates risk. As our knowledge of genes and their role in our lives expands, the decisions we face about genetic testing change too. For instance, the test that Janet took is not offered as a routine predictive test, but is given only to those who have already shown symptoms of Alzheimer's. I want to stress that genetic testing is very personal. You have to ask whether knowing you have an increased risk for a disease would be helpful to you. There's no right or wrong answer, just your answer the one that's right for you.